Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Uh, it is, once again, very late in the fish room. If you have not seen last episode, you need to, because it's pretty sick. Um, at the time of me recording this, in true Tawaiko fashion, I'm actually recording this in the middle of that episode. But uh, as you can see here above me, not the Casa Cam, but that's pretty awesome, the uh, Garage Casa Cam. But maybe if we flip this way, and you can kind of see it a little bit more, uh, and it's all around the room, and no, we didn't paint a black trim around the room, we did what is referred to as a air manifold or a central air system for the fish room. So what is that gonna do? I don't have to have an air pump for every single tank anymore. So it is a very efficient way of uh, driving the whole, the whole fish room. And the one that I have and it's coming in, uh, if you saw the episode, you've already seen the whole thing, but it shoots out 47 liters uh, per minute, I believe, or per hour, one of the two, uh, just, you know, whatever. Um, it's probably 47 liters per minute, to be honest. But um, basically what that means is I can essentially, give or take, run 47 aquariums off of them, um, but I'm going to actually run it in tandem, which again, I talked about in that video. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be that. But today's video, we're getting some more angels. Yes, yes I know, but I gotta cut my teeth again on sickly breeding and I gotta cut my teeth just with breeding and fish husbandry in some capacity, not like I already have a breeding pair of angels. I have convicts that are pairing off. If you haven't seen the convict video, go check it out. They're already pairing off and they're not that old yet. So uh, it's kind of wild that they're already pairing off and being very territorial. I've got all the tilapia. So I say cut my teeth, but hey, it's just another uh, notch in the belt. So what are we gonna do? Well, we've got the 29s racked and I was already thinking about having just angels in these 29s. Why not? That would be, you know, a very smart decision of me. And then the 55s that I have to get the, uh, whatever it's called, the 55s that I have to get the new trim for, um, because the center brace is knocked out. Those, and the trim is not expensive and, and taking the trim off is also not that difficult. Um, it's difficult if you don't have the intention of replacing it and you want to put it back onto the tank. Then it's difficult and then you can start cracking glass. But uh, I don't care about those, so I'm gonna throw them away. I'm gonna get new trim for it. But basically, my intention was already to have at least two breeding pairs of angels. So uh, I, I reached out to, well, I, I'm in a Facebook group. Dude puts on the Facebook group, hey, I've got a breeding pair of angel fish. Here's a picture of the angels, here's a picture of the fry. Now, the angels are gorgeous, do not get me wrong. They're, they're a gorgeous fish, but the fry is what I'm, what I'm caring about. So the angels, and I'll go ahead and pull it up real quick and kind of talk a little bit about it, but the angels themselves are, what is the, ooh, um, what is the name for the angels? Okay, so I've got a breeder, breeder pair of angels. Um, they are Pinoy Pareba. It's been a while since I've spoken any Tagala. Um, so they have the Philippine blue gene as well as the dark gene. So they have three different offspring and this is why I care about it because they have the Paraba, which is white body with blue splotches, Pinoy Periba, and I'm sorry for butchering all of this, which is light black with blue and double black Pinoy Paraba, which is the dark black color. And the fry are gorgeous. So it's three different kinds of fry that this, um, that, that these angels are throwing, which is really cool because that gives a variety to the type of fish that I can provide. It also gives variety to the type of fish that I will own because ultimately, yes, do I want breeder pairs? Of course, I have one right now and they're actually bickering. You probably can't see them, but they're bickering right now. And the koi actually has pearl scale and these have pearl scale as well. Um, but I think it's gonna be cool to have at least two because that's gonna give probably five, maybe six, depending on what these throw because it's koi and whatever the veil tail one is. Um, so if this one throws three and I see that those two are too different, I've got at least five different kinds of koi coming out of the fish room, which is pretty sick. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll be that and that'll be something cool to be able to look forward to. But basically what I want to do is I want to scape this one. So how I'm going to scape it is I'm going to have a sponge filter on the left side. Um, and I think for all of these, I'm gonna have left side sponge filters, but 
just go with me here. Sponge filter on the left side. Then some Amazon sword by it and over on the other corner. Some rocks. And then the other wood that's in that aquarium, I'm actually going to take out of that aquarium and I'm ordering another Anubius to put into this aquarium and I'm gonna super glue it to the back. Why do I wanna do that? Well, after watching these angels, they've moved their fry a couple of times. So the first time they spawned, they laid the leaves on one leaf and then they moved the fry to another leaf and they grew up on that leaf and then they became free swimmers and then they slept, I think, on that same leaf. This time, they spawned on the Anubius Barteri, they moved the fry once hatched to the Amazon sword, then once they moved, or once they hatched and they were wigglers and after a couple of days, they actually moved them back to the Anubius and then today they moved it back to a different sword leaf. They've used two sword plants and they've used the Anubius. I'm not saying that that's the magic number, but just when you go for a natural um, kind of breeding situation and that's working, why would I not set up the other tank the exact same way? So luckily I do have two swords, so they won't have the Anubius quite yet, but they'll at least have two swords. Maybe I can condition them. Maybe I can get some fry out of them. We've got the two fry um, systems going at the same time. And maybe this episode, if we're not too crazy, um, I think I might actually set up the, the proper fry system to where I can drop these down to being right here. I think we're gonna do that. I say think, it's probably definitely gonna happen. I just have to cut the, um, I just have to cut the wood. It's really not gonna be a hard install. I have to cut the wood and I have to cut the, the like slivers of wood that I'm gonna drill into. And I think I have, oh, excuse me. I think I have screws long enough. If not, I'll get them. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that to, to have it actually set up now. But uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is first and foremost, I'm gonna grab some of the sand, some of the play sand that is in just about every single aquarium that I have. Uh, I've still got some left over, definitely enough for a 29 gallon. And I'm going to fill up the bottom of this 29 and I'm gonna put them uh, that I'm getting down here and I don't have a lid for it. So I'm using those for the time being until I get some more green wall uh, or green wall, greenhouse paneling in. But I'm gonna escape this. I'm gonna take out the wood and the swords and I'm probably gonna end up taking one of the sponge filters that's seeded from the quarantine tank. I keep doing horrible lighting on my face, but I'm gonna take one of the seeded sponge filters out of the quarantine tank just because I feel like everything else I kinda wanna keep where it's at. Um, I'm either gonna take one out of the bristle or one out of the quarantine, and I've already got an order on the way um, after finding out about this of two more swords the Anubius, two more sponge filters, one more Zis stone, and uh, I think that's all that's in the order. So that's already gonna be on its way, coming over so we can go ahead and replenish whatever sponge filter I take from, and also, which I actually think about, it's probably just gonna be the, uh, what's it called, the, uh, those things, the bristle nose. Uh, that just seems a little bit smarter to me because of all of the plants that are in the bristle nose aquarium, but uh, I digress. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and scape that out, put some rocks in there, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna work on that now. Might get bit by some angelfish, who knows? But uh, let's see. Okay, so let's take a quick glance on you know what has happened. So basically, um, I'm filling up this one right now, but as we talked about the wood, this just looks kind of barren now on this side of the aquarium, but it's kind of nice. It's got some free swimming space for the two, um, uh, two adults that's the word i was looking for and then the fry get free swim and i can look at them and not be confused um because of course the the angels are taking care of the babies and everything and so on and so forth but this this is fantastic um spider let's let that not get in the house that's what all that sound was um uh, but this 29 is looking good so we put the wood in there and the uh, the Anubius will go like right here, but on the backside, just like in the other aquarium, we've got the one sword there and the one sword there. Um, the roots got long, which is good. Really, really good. It means that, that of course, uh, they are healthy and thriving. So uh, they're gonna root down in this aquarium as well. And then I've got some space over there for the uh, the sponge filter. This is filling up once again 
I kind of uh, rummaged around some sand and uh, I drained it and filled it back up. I wanted all those particulates out just because I uh, didn't want to have to deal with them. And I actually just got a message. Apparently somebody else is up really late as well uh, because it's like 11.30, almost midnight. Uh, it's 11.59 actually. I just got a notification on my phone. Uh, so yeah, it's 11.59. And uh, I got a message at like around 11:18 uh, from the person that I am getting these fish from, buying them. I am buying these fish, and uh, yeah, yeah. They were like, "Hey, uh, I forgot I have plans tomorrow. Can we do this like the next day?" And honestly, that's not that bad because being future Todd and you already seeing future Todd in last video and past Todd's video, uh, I looked at, uh, I caved and technically it's Monday morning. I guess in one minute it's technically Monday morning. I check, uh, check the tracking information and the pump won't be here until tomorrow, or not tomorrow. Uh, well, yeah, I guess technically now tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, so it is now Monday. So Tuesday night, I'm gonna go get the angelfish um, and also we'll get the uh, the, the setup for the, uh, the, the manifold. But uh, us, which means it'll probably get set up Wednesday because Tuesday I'm just going to worry about putting them in here. A uh, couple of quick updates. So I did go ahead and fill this with sand as well because eventually, like we talked about, those angels in this 55 will move over to the 29. Just makes breeding a little bit easier and also the fry don't have to go as far when they're going for the brine shrimp. And I talked about using those on top of this with the new breeder pair until I get the, uh, the, the uh, twin wall. And I'm actually gonna change that. I'm gonna lower Perry's water level a little bit because as you can see, that giant bar is in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lower Perry's, um, Perry's water, and then I'm gonna put these yellow lids on top of her aquarium instead of on top of this aquarium. And I'm gonna take the lid from Perry's aquarium and put it onto that. And I'm also going to, uh, because I'm gonna have that, um, oh, actually, I didn't think about that. I can just take Perry's light too, because yeah, because Perry's not gonna necessarily need a light. That's actually kind of good because Perry's aquarium out of everything in the fish room gets the most amount of algae. So I'm gonna give it some time to die back. That's smart. And look, salt water, they're uh, all asleep in that live rock. The damsel goes in the front and the uh, the clownfish go in the back, but uh, yeah, they're doing good. But yeah, so that's going on. Um, so in two days time, I'm gonna go pick up the angels. Uh, one other note is that this angel is actually doing really, really well um, in this bristlenose aquarium. And the two angels that we have down there, I know I bought three, we have two left. One of them just did not make it, unfortunately. Um, sometimes that happens. Uh, two of the hyphen Pilatus Cori's also did not make it. They shipped fine, they get here, and just, I acclimated them, I did everything right on my end. Sometimes they're just too stressed. Um, it's, a, it's a sad reality, but sometimes they are just too stressed. So I'm down to two angels. Uh, one of them is smaller, one of them is larger, one of them is about a, the body is about a quarter size, the other one's about a nickel. So kind of a, a stark difference in size. I'm actually gonna net the two of them out, probably tomorrow, and I'm gonna put them in the aquarium with the bristle nose and the medium angel. I don't think this angel is gonna uh, pick at them. And I saw on the quarter body size um, angel, he's got a little bit of a, uh, not fin rot, but like nipped fin because he's in with um, some black skirt tetras and some serpe tetras, high numbers, high density. There's gonna be some fin nipping. Um, I think that those tetras do fine on their own but, or even in a proper space, but we've got so many so densely populated, there's going to be issues. There's, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. There's going to be some issues. So I'm gonna actually move the, uh, the angels into this 55 uh, tomorrow, and hopefully it'll work out a little bit better, and especially because one's already in there. The bristlenoses don't care about them, and these are gonna be so small, I doubt the bristlenoses are gonna care. Um, and I already feed the medium sized angel uh, brine shrimp. So like uh, baby brine, live baby brine, I try and feed that to them. And I am overflowing the 29 again, of course. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, it is, like I said, past midnight, hence the rambling even more so and me uh, letting some water get onto the garage floor. So we will pick this back up in two days and I'll see you all then. 
everyone. Uh, so, uh, it's been, what, a day or two or whatever? Let me get my glances. Um, I'm excited to see these videos all go out and then watch them and like edit them and be like, oh, look, I was in this shirt on this day, this shirt, this shirt, this shirt, especially because like, um, if you watched last episode, which you definitely need to because, hey, this stuff, this stuff's starting to pop off real time. But um, so far, uh, what we did was we went ahead and we have the two swords in here with the driftwood and the space for the sponge filter. I currently have two more swords and about um, and four sponge filters and a couple other stuff coming uh, so we can do that up. The Anubius Barterai to put onto that, um, that log, so on and so forth. Um, I, I think I showed it off. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um, but the little angels that I moved in here... I say that and we're in the world the other one's probably hiding behind a sponge filter or some oh no it's right there you guys probably saw it and was like hey this idiot but uh the medium size the quarter size one and the nickel size one they're doing good um this one's actually kind of leaving them alone so doing pretty good the zucchini has been cored out as you can see uh that's why i just topped the chop the top and bottom off because they'll eat the skin uh throw it in there and then they eat it up but uh, yeah, basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab this bucket, we're going to fill it up, and we're going to get ready to go. Um, so just kind of a quick update because that's all we got to do. And then we're going to get on the road and go get the, the, the fish. Um, I'm super stoked. I think it's going to be awesome. But yeah, let's fill it up and let's, uh, let's get going. Okay, so we made it uh, with a little bit more to bargain or, uh, than we bargained for uh, in a good way. Uh, stay tuned for next episode and the episode after that because both episodes include a little bit more than we bargained for. But what we're gonna do now is the angels are down in this bin. Um, and let me go ahead and I of course kicked over all the sardines that I bought for the Oscars. Of course I would kick those over. Let me go ahead and, gosh man. I'm telling you these things are stunning. Uh, just as stunning as the lighting that this thing does for me. But if we go ahead and look, there they are. They are super black. They look like they're doing pretty okay. They're going in this aquarium. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and... Um, why is it not... There we go. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the lid off of Perry's aquarium um, and also the light off of Perry's aquarium. Then I'm going to take this light that I'm not really using from the turtle tank and put it on the Perry's tank just because honestly, I, I well, A, there's plants in here, so that's very important. And, and B, I, I kind of want to showcase these a little bit more than Perry at the time being because they're newer. And also, I'm going to be ordering some new um, stuff anyway soon. So, you know, so be it. But we'll go ahead and get that situated and get that taken care of and then uh, take it from there. This thing keeps going out of focus. I can't. Okay, so. It's actually been two days? No, it's actually only been one day. Yeah, because I was supposed to not be able to do this until tomorrow, but the uh, the shipment came in a day early. So what ended up happening, and I can't exactly show you because you need to be here for next video to see all of it, but uh, here is the angelfish. And th ah, dude, this, this camera, and of course the stuff that's in, on the, uh, the glass is going to take a lot of the focus. Um, but it just does not do these things justice. That's the male, that's the female. The female's definitely darkening up a little bit more where the male still has some splodges on his body, but they are gorgeous to say the least. But we did get the Anubius in, so the Anubius is in and on that, um, uh, the, uh, the driftwood. We've got the sword up in one end and the sword up in the other end. And then this, um, part of one of the shipments that I got, actually the same shipment as the plants, is I got some more, um, got some more sponge filters. So if you saw last video, we were able to put one of the sponge filters, uh, or two, a double stack sponge filter in the, uh, 55 tilapia tank over there. I went ahead and got two more. So one of them's here and the other one is replacing over there and oh, gave you guys a little bit of a sneak peek on uh, something else that's that's coming for uh, next or the video after next actually. But just to wrap it up, we will show you that the fry are doing awesome. 
Now again, it is a little bit past their bedtime, so I need to go ahead and let them go to bed. Uh, that and also the angels that I moved into this aquarium are doing fantastic. These two seem to be settling together a little bit more. And then this little one is kind of just off by itself. Also, I did get a shipment of two more swords that I decided to plant in here for the time being just because there's so many just nutrients um, in this tank and uh, they will kind of flourish a little bit, um, especially because those swords are huge and beautiful and uh, I don't want to take those swords out of the tank with them right now and also I don't want to put these swords in that tank because I don't want to disturb the section over here where they're actually taking care of the fry. I kind of want to just give them their own space. So once things settle down, then I will go ahead and uh, transplant. Those two swords are probably gonna go in here just because they're huge and they're beautiful. So those swords are gonna go into this 29 with that driftwood with the Anubius. And I'm just gonna basically give them the same setup, the sponge filters, I'm gonna take some of those stones. The whole setup is going with them but I'm probably gonna keep the fry in the 55 for the time being, at least until I get those set up, because I did move these back into the fish room, and I think that's definitely gonna be where it's going. And then the tens are gonna go above the stock tanks. So these stock tanks are gonna be raised, and we're gonna have the, um, the, sumps, <coughs> the sumps underneath them. So they're gonna be raised with the sumps, and then above them is gonna be seven and seven, um, so 14, of the 10 gallons so that way we can breed different things in the 10 gallons like guppies and, and small things of that nature um and maybe have like a beta tank or something you know have a couple of show tanks i mean it's 40 or 42 it's 14 10 gallons i think we can spare one or two for some cool show tanks uh but yeah it's gonna go again above this but i'm super excited um these things you may have seen it when i showed you the tank but the new breeder pair of angels uh, they already ate some blood worms. So when I put them in yesterday, I did not feed them anything. Uh, this morning when I fed the babies, um, the fry for the angelfish, I took a little bit of the baby brine and I actually squirted it into um, the, uh, the tank, the 29 gallon with the angels because it's something that a lot of breeders think. And I, I just, from a, a making sense standpoint, uh, basically what people talk about is, oh, hey, if the parents see that there's baby food, then they're going to want to spawn. Oh, hey, my kids can have food. That's like for us. Oh, hey, I have enough income. I have enough X, Y, Z. I can provide for my kids. Now it's a time for me to have kids instead of just trying to do it recklessly or something like that. So having uh, the food available is really good. Um, and I think it shows them and kind of triggers them to go, hey, we're going to do it. But uh They've been picking at the Anubius since I put it in there, maybe because it's uh, new in there. He also said that they haven't spawned in a little bit. Uh, in the last couple of times that they did spawn, the other angels, because he had like six breeding pairs and a 55 together, or not six, uh, three, maybe four breeder pairs. Uh, I think he actually had four breeder pairs because I took these out and he sold six, I believe, um, if I'm remembering properly. So yeah, it was, it was quite a few. but. They're doing good. I ended up taking the lid off of Max's aquarium. I might've talked about that in the last uh, video, just because, or last clip, because the one for Perry's, even though they're, though they're both 29s, the one for Perry's didn't fit. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, who cares? It's all good to go. But uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Twyco, stay tuned because next episode is gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, and I'm super excited to show you all what's going to be going in next video, but until next time, hope you have a great one and I will see you in the next video.